Hello. Uh, thanks for the compliment, Master. Nalo, tuloy ako kinabahan na. Okay, but I just want to praise and thank God for this opportunity once again to stand here and preach the Word of God. It was uh, re- really a great blessing for us to share the Word of God. And uh, uh, it's an opportunity uh, to, to, tell the, uh, to share the truth from the Word of God. So I just want to invite you to open your Bible in the book of First John. This is what we are studying we are now in 1 John chapter number 2, verse 18. Let's read 18 until 29. Let's all stand up as we read the Word of God. Let's read this responsibly. 1 John chapter 2, 18 to 29. I'll read 18 and you follow in verse 19 until we finish 29 altogether. Verse 18, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus, Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him of his coming. Altogether, if we know that he is righteous, we know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. God bless the reading of his holy word. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for this uh, time to study your word. I pray, Father, that you will guide us. Let the Holy Spirit teach every one of us the truth from thy word. And I pray, Father, that you will be lifted up in our midst. Uh, I ask, Lord, for wisdom as I study this word, uh, study your word. Help me, Lord, to, to relay it to your uh, children, to your, uh, to your son and daughter. And thank you so much, Lord, for this privilege that you have given to each every one of us. I pray, Father, that you will guide us. Uh, give us, Lord, a receptive heart to understand your word. Forgive us. Forgive us from all our sins, all these things. I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you all may be seated. So before that, I just want to praise and thank the Lord for uh, giving my daughter another year. She's uh, seven years old. When, uh, it was her birthday last uh, Thursday. Uh, yeah, Thursday. Uh, I, just, uh, I was really amazed by God's grace and his faithfulness to us. Uh, I remember that time, it's still fresh in my mind when I went teacher Evelyn, he said, I, I think I will give birth. It was around 2 a.m. in the morning, and I said, maybe it's false alarm because I'm too sleepy. <laughs> I said, no, it's different. And then I, we went there, and then it was, uh, I'm expecting again, uh, si Sarian, yung bibi akin, parang daeng. <laughs> 
hindi na at praise God, ha? naging normal. Normal po si Song Song. Mukha lang hindi normal lang. <laughs> Pero normal po yan. So, ayun po, uh, I just want to praise the Lord for uh, giving us uh, Song Song and all my children. And I, uh, my prayer also that I want to, uh, that I will lead them in the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because I remember in the Philippines, I listening to the testimony of the parents, I've heard that oh, oh, we lead my chi- uh, I lead my children in prayer, that they accepted Christ, they are now Christian. And but now when we study the Word of God and when we, we yeah, our team prove all things, it is not the way how, we, how they will be saved. So because of the preaching and the reading of God's Word, because of listening of the, the truth, I, uh, I found out that that's not the way. You need to explain to them, like uh, Brother Jong, I, it's very helpful when Brother Jong posted some uh, uh, information about how to help your children to understand that's what we are doing. And I'm so excited, and they are also excited when we are studying about salvation. About, I, I think they will not understand, but, but I try. But they really understand, especially his song. They keep on, she keeps on asking, what's the meaning of this, what's that? Because we are studying the vocabulary of salvation, we finish repentance, faith, and <laughs> reconciliation. He said, I'm having a hard time to pronounce the reconciliation, propitiation. <laughs> but I started to explain to them, but they really, I hope and I pray that they really understand the Word of God. Amen. And because that's the only way to... Uh, No, I, hindi nag emotional lang po ako kasi pag, pagdating sa mga anak. <coughs> okay, so, ngayon po kasi uh, when I, I, every time I'm thinking that uh, they will not, they will grow uh, na mapariwara sa Panginoon, parang mabigat isipin. At sabi nga sa Bible, habang bata pa sila, uh, kailangan ibigay mo na yung uh, yung yung uh, authority na talagang maintindihan nila ang salita ng Panginoon. Kasi pag, when they grow old, when they grow up, they just decide by themselves. I know they are, in, they are approaching in their age of accountability because they really understand what they are doing. The, a little bit problem because it's hard to explain in English sometimes. <laughs> Kaya ayun lang medyo ano. Pero but the, the Bible that we are studying is in English, that's why. I'm also thankful. So, ayun lang po, that's what I'm... Uh, gusto kong ipasalamat sa Panginoon. Uh, at uh, thank you po sa inyong prayer, sa mga tumutulong. Salamat po at uh, alam po ng Panginoon kung uh, sino kayo at sa mga hindi pa tumutulong. <laughs> <laughs> Pwede pa unong <laughs> Okay, so thank you for that. So, we are, we are here in First John chapter... 2 verse 18 we study uh, the last time I don't know when is that I think two months ago uh, we study about the book of John that the central theme of John is about fellowship the fellowship of uh, uh, the brethren to each other to the father and to the son and and we can have that fellowship according to to the word uh, in first John chapter 1 and chapter 2 if we will abide in Jesus Christ so and we can enjoy that fellowship if we are really a true believer now in in this verse verse 18 to 29 uh, the title of our uh, message today is, is standing in the truth this is very uh, timely because nowadays uh, it is sad but true reality that most of the churches today will never give a detailed message of false teachers and false prophets. They, uh, it seems that it is not religious, politically correct in the, in the days in which we were live to attack and contend for the faith. If you are uh, telling the truth, if you are attacking the, the wrong teaching, they will brand you that you are, you are giving a, a wrong signal and you are dividing the brethren that's what we are experiencing nowadays when we post something and when we when we uh, uh, reply on their post they will say oh 
you are uh, just dividing and magbibigay pa sila ng verse avoid them that uh, yung nagkocos of division but they really don't understand what they are talking now Christian or churches nowadays are focused on the things that are joyful gleeful and happy experience fellowship or music that touch the emotion kaya gusto ng mga tao yung nagtataas ng kamay hallelujah praise the lord <laughs> Ayan ang gusto nila eh. They are, they want to, to, to feel their emotion. They don't go after the truth in, when they come to the church. And that is what happening in the most of the churches, including Baptist churches today. We heard many Baptists, sound Baptists before, but now look at them. They are if you will compare, like what we are studying about when pastor is teaching, if you compare the churches before and the churches today, we are so far. We, when it comes to doctrine and uh, the practice, churches want preaching that will not hurt the feeling of the members. They don't want that. Preaching that is based on the story or experience of the preacher, Yung uh, preaching that is uh, 90% joke, 90% uh, storytelling, and 10% introduction to their joke. Parang wala, di ba? I remember, this is true. I remember one preacher. He said, okay, uh, ano, mag-joke time na lang tayo dito. Di ba? When you... Pero mga tao, nagtatawanan. They are so happy to hear that. And you can see the, that we are really drifting away from the truth of the Bible. Now, it is boring nowadays to teach sound doctrines from the Word of God. Ang mga naboboring lang naman, yung naboboring lang naman, yung mga talagang walang espiritu ng Panginoon. Di ba? So, ba'y nagising lahat? <laughs> nagising lahat tayo. So, hindi, ma, I, I know, I, you will feel that if you are bored hearing the Word of God. Bible na naman. Wala namang ibang, hindi ba? Kasi sa, in the Philippines, we are when when we are when we have fellowship we have games na? mas marami yung games merong ano kantahan action song tapos yung yung uh, preaching eh devotion lang galing pa sa daily bread hindi natin <laughs> di ba ayan ang uso eh ganun lang masaya na tayo dun tayo na uh, na na lumaki at talagang uh, naging masaya tayo pero hindi pala that's not how the the church must be and uh, to stand in the truth. They are not standing in the truth. And many are teaching false doctrine and sad to say that members are unaware of that teaching. So if you are, uh, uh, like in the, in the Philippines, there are lots of doctrine that is against the Word of God, it's out of context, it's out of the, the, the truth of the Bible, but, there are, but the, the members are just agreeing. They don't even uh, recognize that what they heard from the preacher or from their pastor is against the Word of God. Uh, we, we know that we can see here in the Bible because they, have, they don't have the Holy Spirit, sad to say. Because uh, many Christians nowadays, they think they are Christian when, when they are uh, coming to the church. I rem- uh, uh, Sister Kay, we are talking a while ago about our cousin and our relatives because uh, when we remind them that uh, I remember my sister, my older sister, he, she texted me, uh, how are you? I said, uh, <laughs> ang uh, reply ko sa kanya, siguro doon mo yung kaligtasan mo, hindi mo. Sabi niya, ah, okay, amen. Sabi niya, ayun lang. Para bang natural na sa kanila, sa kanila na maririnig yung i-review mo sila kasi they are used to hear the word of God. They pray the prayer. They think that they are saved. Oh, that's okay. And then, and then God knows our heart. And then we, we can see from their works. And the Bible says you can know their, them by their fruits. So that's the sad thing to say. So now, what false doctrine does? false doctrine? It will slowly separate us from the truth of God. We may look religious, but we are far from Christ. We will be soon out of track. If we are not standing in the truth. Now, here in verse number 18 and verse until verse 29, we are, we're going to see three things here. 
the truth about these passages. Uh, number one in verse 18, it says here, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Uh, Apostle John is warning us about the Antichrist. This Antichrist, uh, we know it will come. The yung, yung Antichristo. But he, he said, but now, even now, there are many Antichrists. In my S, marame. Whereby we know that it is the last time. Number one that we can see here that there are false teachers nowadays. Antichrist was the false teachers even in the time of John. During the time of John, uh, when the gospel is still fresh, maybe most of them saw the Lord Jesus Christ, his ministry. And then in that time, there are many false teachers arise. Imagine during that time and now, if we compare how the, this false teacher will grow, or gan sila kabilis dumame, it's hard to imagine. That's why Apostle John is trying to, to warn us about this false teacher. Now, when you say anti, anti means in place of, or instead of, or maybe against. If someone is preaching another gospel or false doctrine, it is antichrist. Those who they have the spirit of Antichrist, they don't believe on the truth. They be, they preaching another gospel. They are preaching another doctrine, and you can uh, know about that by uh, by simply studying the Word of God and by diligently reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Now, now they are preaching an anti-Christian. They are preaching an anti-Christian message. Anybody who adds anything to the Word of God is anti-Christ, anti-Christian preaching. There are many preachers today, if you will listen to them, they sound spiritual. But if you're going to scrutinize them, if you're going to listen carefully on what they are saying, you can see that, uh, they, are, uh, they are drifting away from the truth. They are uh, uh, going away from the from the true church that Jesus Christ built, they are falling away. That's why when we study in the uh, pastor preach about apostasy, during those times there are so many apostates, even until now. And they are called Antichrist because they are against or want to replace Christ by their false teaching. Now, how can you tell who is, who, 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 who is not and who is the Antichrist? Now, sad to say, Antichrist is not outside from the church. It is inside the church. In the context of 1 John chapter 2, it's anyone who preaches different Jesus Christ. In verse 19, this is reality. They, it says here, they went out of us. It's referring to those Antichrist, those who are preaching the false doctrine. But they were not of us. You see, they, uh, they belong to the church. They, uh, I remember Simon uh, the sorcerer. Remember in Acts chapter, I don't know, something chapter number 8. Uh, Simon the sorcerer, when he saw the apostle who are uh, teaching, uh, Apostle Philip is teaching the, the Bible, teaching the gospel, he was convinced. And you know, he was baptized. If you read the Bible, he was baptized, but he is not saved. No, Apostle Peter uh, rebuked him because he wants he want to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. Apostle Peter, oh, you're, you will perish together with your money unless you will repent. So during those times, even Philip, uh, I, I read that account, but I don't know if Apostle Philip baptized him. But during those times, talagang ma... Ma, ano sila, yung fresh pa sila sa gospel pero nalusutan sila diba? may nakalusot ma, ma, isipin natin sa ngayon marami talagang maka, there are many uh, uh, anti-Christ who will come in uh, uh, Jesus Christ said that in Matthew remember na may, ang, ang devil ay magtatanim ng tears diba? magtatanim yan ng mga, ng mga kalaban sa iglesia ang aatakihin talaga Nang Diablo ay ang church. But praise God, uh, Jesus Christ said also, 
uh, even the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We are s discussing that in, when, in our meeting. Uh, Pastor is explained to us, and it's clear to me that uh, how we explain, uh, I will not teach that because uh, Pastor will teach us, teach that. So, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in verse 19, it says, They went out of us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt. They continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So, it is a manifestation when they go out from us, it means to say that they are antichrist, that they are not belong to us. You know, it's really hard to pretend. Pretending that you are a Christian. Ma darating ang panahon, talagang aalis at aalis ka. O talagang, hindi natin alam, o talagang matiisin ka. Talagang marireveal yan, it will reveal. It will reveal. They are not of us, in what sense? Biblically, theologically, they were not on the same page. Apostle John says, there's nothing that flushes the people out. And what it is, it is the Word of God. It is the Word of God that, they, that, that let them go out. That's why we, when we are preaching the truth uh, about the Bible, about the right doctrine, tinay maraming mga nagkakaroon ng uh, uh, nagiging, na, lumalabas yung kanilang ugali. Eh, parang hindi naman ganyan, di ba? They, the Word of God will flush them out. Ayun lang magagawa ng salita ng Diyos. Either you will change your heart, you will believe on the Lord Jesus, or you will be flush away. And that's the, how the Word of God works. God teaches us to stand for the truth. We can do that by contending the faith, studying the Word of God, and listening to the sound teaching and doctrine. That's why we need to be very careful what we are listening and what we are reading. Uh, we, we, we can uh, easily uh, know that. You need to compare it from the Bible. If it's true or not, you need to search. And you need to need some help. You need to ask. That's why we are so privileged here that we have question and answer. You can ask whatever uh, you, want, uh, uh, you want to know about the Word of God. Now, for those who are preaching the Word of God, uh, uh, preachers, we need to preach the truth of the Bible to people so that people who do not believe the Word of God will either end up believing or they will leave. But we have to preach it in such a way to where for those who oppose it are uncomfortable. Maging unco uncomfortable sila for those who uh, yung lumalaban sa katotohanan. Di ba? If you are against something, you will feel uncomfortable and that's the time you will leave. You see, the Word of God will flush you out and they will leave and preach it in such a way it is clear, it is plain, it is to the point to where to those who are seeking the truth can understand it and embrace it. So that's what we need to do when we preach the Word of God. It must be clear and uh, we, 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 they will understand the truth. Teaching and studying on the truth, this is what preserve the churches. Churches that not stand will one day will fall. The church that will not stand on the truth, it will fall. Marami na tayo nakita niyan in the Philippines. They are be, uh, maraming uh, churches na, na, na dissolve na. Kaya nga yun nga yung pinagmintingan namin, sabi ng pastor na, oh, kung talagang uh, the gates of hell na, uh, prevail against it, why there are some churches that are dissolved? Diba? But, totoo po yan, maraming na dissolve Just because they are not standing in the truth. But we need to do it in the right spirit and in the right motive. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. For those who know the truth, for us who knows the truth, we need to explain to them we, in meekness and fear, with humbleness, with humility. We don't try to humiliate them, to, to push them down, to, to bully them. We don't do that. And we just 
plainly tell the truth about the Bible. That uh, I remember when the first time we contend for the faith, we are some some of our uh, uh, post is so aggressive, but we learn from from that, and then we try to. Because pag naging aggressive, parang maraming ane, lalong nagagalit eh. Pero you try to to do that because this is the word of God. It's re really effective. They will ask, and some those who are reading, oh, they appreciate because they know that what we are telling them is about the word of God, about the truth. So that's the first thing that we can see here nowadays that there are false teacher in and number two, uh, three points lang po ito. We have been given number two. We have been given the tools to, to discern truth from error. This is a good thing that we can know the truth from error in verse 20 but ye have an unction from the holy one and ye know all things the unction here or the anointing is the holy spirit the holy spirit will uh, live in us he is the one who will who teaches us all things when you say all things not all things here on earth or in heaven you know there are things that i know that you don't know and vice versa maybe i know more when it comes to math physics and chemistry because i'm teaching that for 10 years but when it comes to grammar 100 percent you will you're better than me because i'm not that good in uh, <laughs> english i remember my daughter uh some he she asked me about her homework and her homework is that present simple affirmative who's your teacher uh sir haji simple presence i don't know what's that i didn't tell her I, but i said can i see your oh i think that's correct <laughs> i really don't know i know only noun and verb during our time and there's two types of verb the verb that can fly and cannot fly <laughs> ah may may isa pa pala yung linking verb yung tinama ng tirador ay linking verb apilay <laughs> so ganun po we don't know the Bible is not telling us that we can learn everything. We cannot know. But it's here in verse 20. The word know here means to see or perceive or distinguish. It says here in, uh, in John chapter 14, verse 26. John 14, 26. And Jesus says this one. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, from the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you this is the all things that john is telling to the believers know all things all things needful to guard against these opposers and seducing teacher it is the privilege for those who have this anointing to the to know christ personally know all things means the presence of the holy spirit to every believer enable him or her to perceive the truth from the word of God and enable him to distinguish distinguish it from that which is false so it will that all things all things that we can uh, we can uh, know about the truth the Holy Spirit will teach us that's why when we hear something I don't know when you experience that uh, when I watching some uh, preaching I think it's not true I think it's not biblical then you need to check if it's biblical or not and that the, the holy spirit will will guide you will teach you that all things about the truth that we need to know about uh, about the truth of the word of god and uh, but by the but by the way we distinguish truth from error is not by reading books written by men we distinguish truth from error by the bible given to men by his word by studying and reading the word of god this is where the discerning will come from maybe you are thinking why i cannot discern that you know the reason because maybe you you are not studying the word of god you are not reading the bible you are not diligently uh, uh, studying or uh, searching about the truth so you, it will it is it, it, it it's not automatic you need to do your part the bible says that maybe you think it's magic and the comporter will come and you know all things no that's not what the bible says you need to study that's why the bible says study to show thyself approval to god we need to search we need to do it by ourselves 
and uh, nobody will do that for us only by ourselves. And then, uh, I remember there is one fundamental Baptist preacher who said that, he said that you don't need book, you don't need commentary, only the Bible, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. And it's written here. You know, it sounds spiritual. It sounds spiritual, but it's not biblical. Because in 1 Corinthians uh, 2.14, uh, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. If you will just, uh, an unbeliever will read the Bible, they will not understand it. They, it's written in the Bible. That's why uh, there is one uh, bill in the Philippines that they said uh, a mandatory Bible reading because they will, uh, they will know. They will know about God. They will learn. But the Bible says they will not understand it. It is uh, because they are uh, is, I mean, spiritually discerned. Foolishness sa kanila yun eh. Hindi nila may intindihan yan. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch? Yung kanilis kanila ni Pastor, Ethiopian eunuch? When he's reading the Bible, he, did, he doesn't understand. And then the Holy Ghost spoken to Philip. Philip, you go there, you explain to him. And when he explained, he understand the word. But that's why it's not true that you need only the Bible and the Holy Spirit and you will grow. No, hindi po ganun. Because, uh, uh, and God gave us the local church for our edification and learning and growing. When you reject what God has given you, you cannot understand everything. In, first, in Ephesians 4.11, it says there, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why, what do you think? Why the Holy Spirit, why God gave this these apostles, uh, wala na ngayon yan, yung mga, but evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Why God is giving this to the church? Because it will help us to grow in the truth. And for the, it says here in verse 12, Ephesians 4, 4, 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, if God give us the pastor and teachers, how can anybody say we don't need any pastor or teachers? Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, I don't need pastors. I don't need teachers. I can know it by myself. Hindi po ano yun. Hindi po totoo yun. At wala yun sa salita ng Panginoon. Kasi ang Diyos mismo ang nagbigay ng mga teachers and pastors for us to know. But the Holy Spirit will teach us. Will uh, give us discernment. What, what, what we are reading, what we are hearing, if it's against or uh, if it's from the, the truth. So it is the Holy Spirit that gave us the ability to understand the truth that we get. So, that's the difference. And then, number three. First, we saw here that there are false teachers. Now this, and we need to be careful from, from them when we are listening to them. But the good thing is, God gave us the tools, or we have been given tools to discern truth from error. And then number three, in verse uh, 28 and 29, it says here, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Now, number three, we are to be challenged what God has given us for his glory. John is challenging us to abide in Christ and in the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ and not to get away by false teacher. Now, abiding is obviously not automatic for a believer. It's not automatic. It doesn't mean that when you are a believer, you are automatically, uh, you, you are abiding because the Bible says, Jesus is telling, abide in me. If ye abide in me. It doesn't mean that if you abide, uh, this is the way of salvation, abiding, but this is given to the Christian because we know how to be saved by repenting of our sin through faith, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. Uh, that's the way of salvation. But the sanctification is different. This is by abiding. Abiding is only for the believer. In the face of what we call lordship salvation, Calvinism, 
perseverance of the saints, they, they say, whatever true believer will live an abiding life in Christ. Sabi nila ganun, kapag uh, ikay uh, kristyano, mabubuhay ka, you are abiding in Christ. Well, then, why in the world was John says, abide in Him when it's automatic? It is not automatic. We need to abide Jesus Christ telling in the gospel or the book of the gospel that you need to abide in me. If you, uh, yeah, in John 15, 4, Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except ye abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Jesus Christ said, abide in you and you will be saved. He's talking to the Christian. He's talking to the believer. And in John 15, 7, he said, if it is conditional, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, in, you see, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. So abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ will help us uh, to understand the truth and we can ask whatever uh, we will and it will be done unto us. It is something that we need to do, the abiding, because if we will not do it, something will happen to us. If we will live in fellowship with the Lord, we are walking in the light. Obviously, when we are doing that, we will have confidence in His coming. That's what uh, the Bible says. When He shall appear, we will not be ashamed. It will happen if we, if we will abide in Him. We will not be ashamed on His coming if we are keep on abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. Would it be grateful one morning when we are when you are talking to the Lord, reading your Bible, and drinking coffee. You know? And for those who don't drink coffee, I don't want to hear your story. <laughs> so, you know? And then one day, Jesus Christ will come, and then you have confidence. You know, I, I observe that most of the spiritual Christians are drinking coffee. So, hindi naman porket na inom ka ng kape, spiritual ka So, hindi po ganun. Talagang masarap lang mag-aral ng Bible at Uminom ng kape. So we don't need to be afraid when Jesus will come back if we are walking with Him. Remember the song of the children, walking with Jesus, walking every day, walking, oh, don't say no, the way, diba? If we keep on walking, that is abiding in the Lord Jesus Christ. But, but if we don't walk with Him, we will be ashamed before Him at His coming. Uh, you know, you, the Bible says that we, we will have the crown of, I forgot that crown, for those who love the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Crown of rejoicing. If you love, for those who love the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. But how can you, how can we become joyful if we are not walking in the Lord? We are not abiding in Him. If you, in First John 2, 20, if you know that, uh, this is the last verse. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. You cannot, you cannot truly manifest God's righteousness if you are not truly born again. Hindi, hindi yan lalabas. So, yeah, you, they, will know, they will know you by, you, I can know them by their fruit. Yeah, it's really hard. It is difficult to pretend. And uh, that why, that's why he said, they went out of us. Ayun nga, sinabi niya ni John, yung mga anti-Christ dito, talagang umalis sila, yung mga false teacher, because they are not really belong to the church. They cannot, uh, kasi it will really manifest. Sa verse 29, if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Now, because God is righteous, everyone that abideth in him will manifest righteous behavior. Now, the challenge for us today, are we, are we standing in the truth? Can we determine which one is true and which one is false? Can we only do this? And we can only do this if we are truly His children and by abiding in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, uh, this is a challenge to us today. Are we abiding in God? God bless and thank you so much.